Hey there, everyone. I hope you're all doing good. Today, we are going to take a look at mostly the 258T and the 257T. I've talked about it in a few other videos about the Bukla and Tip Top series. The fact that they made it Eurorack and that you don't have any real separation between audio, which are in the Bukla world those metal jacks, and in the original format they are handled by tiny jacks, which looks a bit like those Eurorack mini jack, and the CV, which in a the normal Bukla world are handled, like in the Surge world, by banana cables. And actually, I mentioned Surge because the fact that there is no separation between CV and audio does make those modules much more patch programmable, like people say, in the Surge world. Because you can, for example, use the voltage processor. 257 to process audio. And that's the main point of this video. I wanted to stress out that those two together can be some sort of a complex oscillator. Not a 259, because there's no wave folding available, but we can manage to do some pretty wild things with those two together. I've decided to pair this today with this little torso T1 sequencer that I got recently. Because it makes it quite easy to generate pseudo random patterns. And I think the philosophy works quite well with the bookla thing. So we are going to go for this for the moment. Should be a good starting point. So here. On the 258, we have this timbre shifting available. And we can control that. So we could control it via the oscillator down below. As they go quite low, it makes a nice LFO that controls the shape of this. We can do it at audio rate. So, as a start, one way to use the 257 with this is to use it as a VCA to control the modulation. So we will patch that modulation oscillator to this right side of the crossfader that is in the middle of the 257. We will patch the output back to the control here, and now this will control the amount of modulation. We could decide to control this with basically anything. Could be fluctuating random voltage, Could be the velocity of our sequencer using the, the T1 over there. So the less I use the velocity, the less shape, wave shape modulation I have. I can start to have, add some accent. So 
that's fun. That's one way we can use this. We could use the exact same patch for FM. Let's increase the accent. You can see here when it's active. So this is dynamic FM that does not happen all the time. We can have control of the shape of that FM and its frequency over there. Could also patch the same one volt per octave signal to both. So they will play along all the time in the same way. So basically this is making a modulation bus for any of the parameter that can be FM, can be the other FM actually as well. Or more complicated could be one used for FM and you can use this one to affect the wave shape controlled by something else. So we are starting to get some like this is a complex sound. This is not a simple sign but this is this is complex. Okay, this was the first example. Okay, back with a new tweaked sequence and basically the same pattern before. Now we are going to use those to process directly the signal of the oscillator. So let's take this one. This is going to be the final output. I'm going to plug this in. So first, simple trick. to send the same one volt per octave patch the two together in the crossfader okay so now we have a two oscillator patch so here we can crossfade between sine and square and here between sine and so but using this we could do so to square voltage controllable of course don't know why today I just want to use fluctuating random voltages to do stuff okay that's quite easy So now I will do some amplitude modulation because I will use this oscillator to modulate the level here. As it's a bipolar signal, you need to put the knob at noon so it will modulate both ways. And now you have another mix. You can get lots of very cool timbers from amplitude modulation that sound a little bit like FM but without touching the actual frequency of the oscillator so it might be more stable for tonal stuff. You can do some weird stuff like this as well. Or simple tremolo. Harmonic trouble because it's following here. But if you don't patch the one volt per octave, you can do basic tremolo. That can sound quite cool actually. All straight up weirdness like this. You could also decide to, to control it once again with other stuff. Some sort of uh, unstable 
Litauen. Now, one of the other things is that we could use this to invert the signal. So wave. My so wave is now inverted at this output. I will take this output here. Here I have my inverted so wave. Let's take the other output to here. So what I have here is the inverted version of the wave and the normal version of the wave. In the middle, they cancel each other out. But if we control this, what we have is a ring modulator. And who doesn't love the sound of ring modulation? Once again, ring modulation can be used for very weird metallic and inharmonic sounds like this. Even more if you use square waves. You can do very gentle tones if you use sine wave from both ways. If you use the oscillator, you can tune the two together or not to make some bells. Here you can offset which way it's going to be more inverted or more normal. No, still available to you all those tonal things. What a complex, this is complex. <laughs> Let's use some noise, this modulation here. Okay, now it's getting out of hand, in a good way. And this one makes some weird. So, yeah, with those two together, you have mixing, cross fading, amplitude modulation, ring modulation, dynamic uh, control over whatever you send it. So, it's a quite powerful thing. Like something a bit more well behaved. Find those two are pairing very well together in the context of making complex sounds. It actually makes me want to get two of them. They don't have space here anymore anyway, but this one dedicated to voltages and the other one dedicated to audio. You can so far, do solve both. The ring modulator patch does take everything, except maybe just it makes me want to get a, like a 2 HP inverter thing to go there. Uh, or there, actually. <laughs> just for this. But anyway, I ramble. Lots of very funny sounds to grab.
also try to send CV in. Disturb the thing in the middle. And see what happens. This will probably make the ceiling output here clip. Let's put more CV inside it. Polarity also will make a difference. Let's make some weird. Okay, I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you it was helpful in any way. There's lots to explore trying to replicate this mod bus of the 259, for example, where there is like the AM uh, wave shape things that you can do. And you can do some of it combining those two guides together. This is but scratching the surface. I'm sure there's even more complex patch that can be done by self patching those two more. Also, thanks to Torso for this this recently. I will make a proper video of this one of these days, but it's a nice intro to this. Uh, you can go to my Patreon page if you want to grab some samples from this session. You can uh, buy any of those things via the affiliate things below if you want to support the channel. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.